शरीर इंद्रिया सत्वात्मा समयोगो धारी जीवितम सो so, शरीर इंद्रिया सत्वनात्मा बॉडी माइंड इंद्रिया सेंसेस एंड कॉन्शियसनेस और सोल दे मेक अप द ह्यूमन बॉडी सो दिस दिस फोर डायमेंशनल ह्यूमन बीइंग दैट यू एंड आई आर एंड आर experiencing this majestic uh, birth on this beautiful land which is about to experience spring experience with it various seasons in our being which are called <coughs> emotional seasons <coughs> and even if it is spring outside and there are cherry blossoms and there is beauty we find that we are stressed this is a new kind of condition and in according to conventional medicine it seems like it is also right there along with germs and viruses if something cannot be connected to what is outside germs and viruses then it's you and your stress and god help you <laughs> so either we are being invaded or we are ignorant and foolish and stressful and we don't know what's going to happen but ayurved brings us to this beautiful space of prasannatma so there is another shloka in which they say that the definition of health is not just the definition of the health of the physical body being in balance but we also want to look at a, a word in sanskrit called prasanna prasannata and if to translate it i have to call it as an inner joy and this inner joy and its experience by our entire being would then be called also a state of health and when this prasannata is missing when this prasannata is not there we have the physical body and we are walking it and we have the mind and we are we are using it to log on and earn our money and you know and our senses are working faculties are okay and we go to our regular md and the md says no good cholesterol very good all right okay then you know thank you very much and we walk out and yet there is a part of us that says why do i feel like this and what are you lacking and what you are lacking is that true arogyam or that true health which includes the well being of the mind and the soul and when we lack that we are going about our life going through our material pursuits but we are feeling stressful and this word stress if i had to find its equivalent i would say it is dukha there are three kinds of dukha that we human beings have been experiencing from birth okay and these three kinds of dukhas are um, roughly translated then they can be the dukha which are due to others we are experiencing people in our life creatures that we have to share this world with from the mosquitoes to the mother in law <laughs> <laughs> caused by others <clears throat> then there is a kind of dukha which is uh, which is intrinsic to us caused by imbalances within us at the psychic level at the soma level so it can be in ayurved we have words to explain them called doshas or gunas we won't go into it because many of you are new here but when there is an internal lack of homeostasis when there is disequilibrium we experience this vedana or this pain or this suffering so adi bhautik adhyatmik and adi daivik which means the kind of dukha that comes upon us due to divine instrumentation and it can be due to natural calamities okay and karmic reasons so either which way just look at your condition 
if it's not you creating your own suffering, somebody else you can count upon it, and you hold all the umbrella you want, and suddenly something falls upon you, right? So what do you do, and how do you hold on to the kernel of well-being or prasannata? So, in the the whole unfoldment of the shastra of Ayurveda is really for this dukkha nivritti or how to not have dukkha or suffering but how to have sukha or joy. Very well said that we are spending billions of dollars in disease management and really not in health optimization. Really not. And really we don't come together as a society, as in a community to deliberate upon important matters that are affecting our being. And this modern health system, additionally Dr. Apte, is very alienating and isolating to the individual. Do you agree? When you walk out of that prescription, of that hall with that prescription, be it for an antifungal cream or chemotherapy, you know you're alone with this. You and Google, and that's it. <laughs> that's it. And you and your Google-based support group, maybe, where everybody is saying how miserable they are. So one another reason we have a community in Ayurveda is because I saw it happen in Ayodhya where people with the sickest of disorders would come to our home and just be. Stay here. Eat the food from the community <coughs> kitchen. Take the medicines from the Vaidya who, who is available to you free of charge as we have in our clinic. And the person will go back with oiled and combed hair, glowing look, motivated heart and ready to defeat whatever is coming in front of them. Can we once again return to our right for a collective community empowerment to access our right to be truly healthy Sukha Sangya Gamma Rogyam. What is then this Sukha? What is joy? It is nothing but Arogyam or health. So if you thought, and I will teach you a few things, if Tracy permits me, she keeps saying the time. The time, the time. By the time we give our preamble, we are done. So. It's funny. How much we teachers like to teach. I think I, want to, I have to digress and share this with you. You know, we are teachers, so we like to teach with a long time. When I started my radio show, the disc jockey said two minutes. <laughs> Definition of Ayurved, two minutes. <laughs> Scope of Ayurved, two minutes. I was about to like, but, but, and then I remembered. If you are really a teacher, you can be a student. <laughs> you can learn. So, <laughs> learn to edit yourself. <coughs> then you'll be happy. Yeah. So one is the collective. And not just a random collective, but a collective dedicated to knowledge that can help us become better beings, better mothers, better fathers, better sisters. Whereas to feel stressful is not a shameful thing, it's not a disease, but it's definitely a human condition. But at the same time, the application of knowledge that has been given to us by these beautiful, generous beings called rishis or seers, applying them into our life makes total sense. So now I'd like to connect the seasons with uh, you know our mental health, uh, just because that's our topic. Uh, today. You know, if we don't follow the season and we try to leave, live a certain kind of life where, which is a very western concept and I'm sure all of us learnt it, uh, you know, when we came here was you always have to have the same energy level, same productivity, same kind of cheerfulness, same amount of over the clock, you know, um, um, you know, behavior, creativity, then it is an abnormal concept. That only lives in the virtual machines, not in reality. 
If you look at animals, if you look at birds, if you look at nature, all of it has given itself the luxury of resting and falling during autumn, going into a passive mode or then rejuvenating with spring. So the sun, the moon, the wind, and then earth, where all the drama is going on, you know. This creates the theater and all of Srishti, all of the living nature is following certain rhythms. And these rhythms in the Vedas were known as Rita and Rita and Satyam, truth. These are the two concepts. So if we are in touch with that rhythm and that rhythm cannot be told to us by a magazine or a new fad, but that rhythm has to come from contemplation. And because we are so far away from being able to contemplate, so we might have to come to Sanghas like this. We might have to go to a Vaidya. We might have to take classes. We might have to read an authentic book. But we will so slowly find that Ayurveda's teaching reflects the Vedic teaching completely, which says you're a living being. You will wax and wane. You will change. Your emotions will change, but you have one core central place which remains unchanged, which is eternal, which is a seer within you. That is you. The rest of it will always change. Allow that change. Discipline that change by nature through, say, yoga teachings. To discipline the mind, Ayurveda teachings to discipline the body, so that slowly, 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 you have even disciplined your digestive fire. Mm. The ill-disciplined people, when do you eat? I don't know. Whenever. When do you peep? Oh, when I want to. When do you poop? I don't know. When did you last poop? I don't know. When did you last eat? Um, when you know I saw a sandwich, so I ate it. So it's like they don't know. But the tree growing lemons outside knows what it wants. And it knows which season I have to make lemons and which season I have to not. But we don't know. So the human being got a choice and we chose to forget. There are rhythms of the circadian rhythm also, 24 hour rhythm. Everything from birds to bees to plants, everything wakes up with Brahma Murta with the rising sun. We say that's okay, the bat leaves at 8 o'clock, I'll wake up at 7.30, no, <laughs> I make it. Because I don't follow my rhythm and when the whole of universe falls asleep, we celebrate our scientists because we invented the light bulb and we all fell asleep inside. <coughs> So we are like going against nature and against rhythms. But if you go to the villages of India, if you go to any like more um, traditional communities all over the world, you will find that all the wisdom keepers of that society say, early to bed and early to rise keeps a man healthy, wealthy and wise. But we decided that's just an aphorism, you know. But it is so true. And we have a whole class on, you know, rituals and why you should wake up in the morning. But when you wake up in the morning, and we've had students do experiments on themselves, that those who started waking up early, how their energy lasted better and better and better. Because when you wake up in the morning with the rising sun, that rising sun and even its darshan changes things in your brain. And now they are doing research on how the brain and the sun and everything is connected. But if you are asleep when the sun is rising, when the big free ball of free golden medicine is coming out in the universe, you are asleep because you were playing a game to kill everyone in your isolated little sofa, in your self-entitled depression, because you now have an official you know, um, statement saying, well, you're stressed, you're suffering from stress. And so there is even a medical system that supports you in feeling stress. It gives you titles. It gives you medication for it. It tells you you can, you know, get away from your work also and get free compensation while you are stressed. Sit and cook your stress there. So that when the morning sun comes, you are not there to feel the vibration. So it's simple things like the season and the movement of the day are invitations for us and reminders for us to be in a rhythm.
Once we are in this natural rhythm, we will find that physiological as well as psychological balance, which is equal to health, which is equal to sukha, is easily available to us. So it's very simple thing. If we are going to violate these rules, these are natural rules, as we have all agreed, the panel has agreed, it is common sense. Sorry to disappoint you. Sorry we are not going to charge you billions of dollars for a gadget to put you through it and only find out that you are stressed. We're only going to tell you that any living organism will experience stress <coughs> when it is put outside its natural environment. And when we human beings through all our inventions and smarter than thou technology separated ourselves from our natural habitats, natural foods and natural way of relating which was as a community, we started become seriously sick and humanity is in danger. I know I'm running out of time but I had to say this to you. <laughs> How much? My God, I'm really learning from that radio jockey guy. <laughs> so therefore, my invitation to you is that uh, you can read books. You can, uh, if you have to use Google, Google Ayurved. Uh, come here, find teachers, study. Take our two-month course, take our two-hour course. We have all these options for you. Come to our free clinic. Change your life just by coming to Sanghas. We have people here whose health has changed just by following the season. And we don't even talk deeper concepts here. We just give you some basic reminders. And both these eminent teachers have already given you a very clear idea <coughs> that what was okay in winter is not okay in spring. And you're gonna make, and you're gonna use this transition to make the changes. So one is that is stress purely a mental phenomenon? No. According to Ayurveda, manaha or mind is nothing but something that has the input subtly from the food you eat. Whatever is happening in the body, at a subtle level, the mind is reflecting that. I don't want to go into the scientific words and concepts. For that, you are welcome to come back and, uh, you know, take some other specific classes here, shorter courses in psychology, mind, etc. But I will say that food and mind were cl clarified to have a very direct relationship. So, uh, and there is a discussion in our granthas on that. And it was decided that after a while it was concluded that if you don't eat for a while, there's really no mind. We're not talking about a mind. You don't even have an option. So food becomes the mind. Okay? That's, that's a little scary here. Your food becomes your mind. So you are your enlightenment and you are your schizophrenia based on what you're eating. So if you eat seasonally, if you eat fresh, and if you eat Ayurvedically, uh, following certain rules, and if you eat without greed and, you know, lust for the food, but you eat with some uh, responsibility <clears throat> and research as to what is happening, especially Ayurvedically, you will benefit and your mind will become able to tolerate the, uh, the ups and downs of life. What is stress? Stress is nothing but when an organism cannot flow with the punches. I have this student here who is running the whole show. Can I share? I have this student running here who is running the whole show and she got up a few hours before to realize her car is stolen. We thought she is not coming here but she is here doing her duty, karma yoga. She is only doing seva. She won't get paid to do this. This is her. She is the squirrel. <laughs> she is here. It's yeah. her job. Yeah. And because we didn't know what's happening, 10 more sisters showed up here. They cancelled their programs to support her. And nobody is crying and nobody is stressed. Can you believe that? So, and it's not like she has the money to buy one more car or five more cars. But 
can you roll with the punches? If you are bigger than the situation, you have no stress. <laughs> but if you are smaller than, oh, my spouse snores, so I am now stressed. <laughs> the toilet seat didn't get put down, I am stressed. <laughs> No, I came to this country and I found out that there is a group on we divorced our husbands because they did not put the toilet seats down. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. I tried to understand this country. <laughs> I was trying to find out. So I talked to many people and she was part of that. It's okay. <laughs> That's like a lot of work, you know. Come to India, there's toilet everywhere on the streets. Who to marry, who not to marry, you know? Life in, put it in perspective. So what is stress? My, my goal is to bust your myth that stress is something real. Stress is completely a relative phenomena experienced by the one in ignorance in avidya. One who does not have self-knowledge and one who is away from nature experiences stress. And it is the nature itself which tells us how to be. So seasonal rhythm is very important, natural rhythm is, day-to-day -day rhythm is very important. <coughs> we have this whole sub-science, not sub-science, but right now, because we are talking about Ayurveda, but a sister science of yoga which is the science of the mind and how to make it optimum and healthy. The Sharira, the Indriya, Sattva, the Atma, Sama Yoga, Dhari Jivitam. So, they, the, the yoga, the, the beautiful balance of all these dimensions make us healthy. So, let us look at the science of mind yoga also. In fact, our scriptures also say, Yoga ha moksha pravartaka. So, that yoga will bring us uh, freedom. The science of yoga will bring us freedom. So we utilize it not only to understand our mind. If we are experiencing stress in our mind, then let us try to understand it. Let us try to be uh, a rationalist, scientist about it. So we started understanding how the mind has compulsive thinking or wrong knowledge, right knowledge, how it gets confused and how we need viveka or discrimination between what is real and what only pretends to be real. You know, what is false but appears real and what is truly real. So these kind of concepts are taught by sciences of yoga and Vedanta, which we are teaching here on alternate Thursdays. You are welcome to come and you can go to our YouTube channel, it's all there. So you can listen to it. So there is no reason, apart from your stress, why you won't go to our YouTube channel. There I cannot help you. But uh, as... Uh, uh, that enthusiasm, as Dr. Apte was saying, is very necessary for you to find your way. But there is something called Surya Namaskar. Have you heard of it? Sun Sun Salutations. The Sun Salutation is a very important group of asanas, 12 asanas, which have an amazing three dosha balancing effect. Of dosha, some of you may not know, but I can say it forces all the biological as well as psychic energies or forces within your body. So one round of it done, 12 rounds of it done, 6 rounds of it when you do, you will have a great relief. If it can be done early morning or uh, empty stomach, that will really help you. And if you need help as to how to do it, you can again come to our free yoga class on Sundays in the morning and uh, you can find out everything on our website. And most yoga studios teach yoga namaskar. There are books on it and you can, uh, instead of googling how to find a support group for stressed people, you can say step by step instructions on Surya Namaskar. That's a more proactive activity. Of course, all these teachings are taught by teachers. So when I bring Google, I'm actually only asking you to open a door. I'm not saying let dad be your teacher. Because the vidyas, the, the vidyas, these living knowledge systems were always Guru Mukha, told by a teacher. And so you must be under the instructions of teachers. But if you effort, you will find. I know some of you have come from far, so I don't want to limit you. This Sangha is not a recruitment drive. This Sangha is a set you free drive. May you benefit from this knowledge. May you attract the right teachers. And may you 
you know, become ambassadors of this positive message that these sciences give us where they make health is equal to happiness, is equal to no stress life, very much possible with very simple things. There is something as simple as the plant of Tulsi. Now Tulsi or Holy Basil uh, grows everywhere and now you can find it I think in the modern nurseries yeah. and Indian stores also. This, this Tulsi is very important in spring by the way. Mm -hmm. You can not only like chew the tablets and it has this cleansing effect on all the strotas or channels of the body, improves the prana of the whole being, prevents phlegm and uh, you know allergies and then there's something about tulsi three tulsi leaves and uh, two or three pepper black pepper just put it together and eat it during the spring through the spring and you will do so good you will not develop these seasonal fevers and tulsi you know we pray to it we worship it because in spite of being quite a sharp and hating plant its effect on the mana on the mind is clarifying so it's antidepressant, anti-tamasic, uh, again, uh, anti-heavy in the mind. It's just like, it's a blessing. And it's not a surprise that we have been worshipping Tulsi. It's like, um, it's a complete doctor. And um, if I look at my Baba's usage of Tulsi, because my Baba was the kind of teacher, he took 40 herbs and he knew them well. And he could combine these 40 herbs, it is a Shadi, like, you know, he would combine them for anything and everything. And sometimes I think it was just meeting Baba and drinking the chai I prepared. That, <laughs> that was my seva, to make chai and wash the dishes and things like that. So anyway, so the point is that here is a herb, it cleans your body, prevents phlegm, makes your lung and all your respiratory system strong. It nourishes your system, uh, especially in this season. It's anti-fever therapy. And to your mind, it gives you a jolt of energy. It gives you that kind of stimulation that we need. We don't have to get addicted on it. We don't have to eat it all the time. The small, anumatra, little bit is enough. Because these are so powerful. So. There was a saying, I was just remembering what Baba used to say. My Baba used to say, my grandfather used to say, Jaghar Tulsi Arugai Taghar Baide Kahu Koi. The house which has a cow and a Tulsi plant, why do they need a doctor? <laughs> because the cow will produce ghee. And Tulsi, which will increase age or your immunity. And Tulsi will purify you and detox you. Why do we need Baidya? Then these people will lose their profession. <laughs> <laughs> we will teach them. Then they will teach. <laughs> because, uh, yes. Yes. So, uh, it's so wonderful, these kind of things, that change our life. So, my goal would be, that try to learn about Surya Namaskar because it's specifically for stress, I would like to say. Then there are, I have five minutes, two minutes, five. I would have taught Brahmi, but it's not going in the mode of the teaching, yeah. So there is a pranayam called Brahmari. Yeah. Not this. <laughs> So, uh, maybe, let's yeah. just do it. Yeah. This is the best pranayam that I can uh, teach you without any side effects. But pranayam <laughs> is done, yeah, powerful things, we need these vaidyas. Powerful things, we need them, because powerful things, they all they are always accompanied, Himaji, with judicious wisdom and context. So, oh yeah, we must bust this myth. Ayurveda is not self-help. Mm -hmm. There is, a, you need a teacher, uh, uh, an instructor to guide you or this Sangha forum. We told you what you can do, what you cannot do. We did not cover everything, okay? And um, you cannot self-diagnose, so it's good, good to go to clinicians and find the right, what is going on. But definitely you can use 
some things with the instructions. So all pranayams including brahmari should be done empty stomach. This one is ideally done very early in the morning. Okay. And in this one what we do is we hum and we experience the prana <coughs> moving from below all the way to the top. So as it goes up over here live the indriyas, the sense organs and the brain and all the faculties. They are much here. So we move it in an upward way. And we'll just do one brahmari and you will notice a difference. So if you put your paper and pen down with your permission, I will go ahead. <coughs> so the way this has to be done is you have a proper posture. And just follow me right now. Don't exactly copy me. First just follow me. You take your thumbs and you gently collapse them. You don't repress it. You gently collapse them. And then you take these two fingers and you will gently press on your eyes. And then with these other two, you kind of just rest them on your chair, cheeks. And then you will take a breath in like I am showing you. And then you will hum. So watch. One or two normal breaths. So as you exhale, as you exhale, you will hum and that humming is you, with your mouth closed and the energy will move up. The other thing is that if you've seen television Brahmari by any chance, everybody is like in a competition mode. You, know, you don't have to do all of that. It's very gentle. It's very gentle and it's an inner resonance that you are sending within. Okay. Shall we? So thumbs, collapse, eyes, deep breath and then hum. Open your eyes. How many of you felt an immediate impact in being more centered? That's a big number. So it's just one. So nowadays you will say, do 21. People think <laughs> if you add a lot of numbers, it's more. Rana, do 500. <laughs> Relax. Even if you do one, you got tired on your cubicle, you're feeling like your manager is about to grab you, do this quiet brahmari, even in the parking lot or in the car, before sleeping, when you wake up especially, because that early waking, before 6 a.m. ideally would be great. That will just create another energy. That time you can do one, two, three, don't get stressed on doing Brahmari. <laughs> Do it for the pure joy of it, for the pure love of it. And it's a very subtle, subtle, we call it a Kriya. It's a very subtle activity which integrates different aspects of our gross and subtle being, our matter-based and our energetic being and our consciousness all in this beautiful thread. And as a result, we become self-healing entities. I found out the car was stolen. I went back with my husband and we did some brahmari. And I asked them to do that so that we could be calm and understand what we needed to do and plan out yes. this day. And you started your call the cops and call this with <laughs> brahmari. We have to do what we have to do 
the nature of the earth is the reality is that there is no uh, there is no there is no entitlement for us that things will go a certain way but we have to use the time that we have to make ourselves strong beings physically mentally emotionally and socially excuse me why do we close the ears and eyes yeah because we are moving prana upwards and these indriyas we have five in five senses to take in the world and five to act on the world they are all seats of prana so as we are moving up we close this then only you can experience it nahi <coughs> what's happening is prana is all everywhere and it's coming out that's why you are seeing me and talking but when you close it it's gentle and then become mindful of its rising that's it and you will feel a big difference okay am i done <laughs> thank you thank you i don't know how much i gave you practical i don't know i think mahesh ji yours was the most practical we mm-hmm. only motivated you <laughs> however the biggest disease of today is loss of inspiration and the loss of hope so as messengers of this wonderful science that makes us happy we are happy to share with you this motivation mm-hmm.